everyone, and welcome to episode two of Learning in Public. Episode uh, two and a half? Oh, episode two and a half. This is a re-recording <laughs> of episode two. Uh, the-, the internet did a mercy killing on uh, episode <laughs> two, and it did die. It is lost to the... Well, what really happened is Drew and I forgot to uh, give an offering to the Ether Witch, who owns the internet. <laughs> and the she, podcasting and she gods. Did, yeah, the podcasting gods did uh, decide that our uh, podcast was going to die on this one. If this is your first time joining us, uh, welcome to Learning in Public. This is a show in which Grayson here and I, uh, we learn in public. So, uh, Grayson, how's the week been? Oh, it's been just peachy keen, my dude. Hmm. Um, yeah, well, I, sh- I said week. It's been three days. It's been three, not even. Two, two, two days. Two calendar days <laughs> since our last record. Uh, <laughs> so things are identical. This recording, I feel, is going to be a lot better because Drew and I did just have a beer each. Yeah, we're feeling a little loose today. It's going to be jazz in this one, baby. Oh, yeah. We're here yeah. in the lovely Ix Art Park in downtown Charlottesville. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, and we're under sort of a jungle dwelling. Yes. A Blue Lagoon uh, Where style. the wild things are style yes, uh, yes. dwelling, um, which is lovely. It's going to keep us out of the rain in case it rains. Uh, but we're also wearing these lovely ball caps that I've attached our microphones to. Yes, I always to. wear baseball in this hat. <laughs> For those of you who are enjoying the audio and non-video version of this podcast, I am wearing, how would you describe this hat? I, uh, a mix between a fishing hat and a cowboy hat, I would Yeah, say. yeah, Indiana Jones-ish. Yes, Indiana Jones-ish yeah. hash without the darkness. It's very light. Yeah, yeah, it's a light, a, the light version. It looks good. Well, thank you. Well, uh, Grayson, should we dive, just dive well, right in? you didn't tell me how you were. Oh, I, I how, just, how is your three days? Two oh, days been? My two it's days like, has been really great. Uh, we just had a lovely picnic with uh, some of our friends since uh, since the last podcast. Virginia has actually uh, moved out of shelter in place. Uh, Virginia rules. is a friend of ours. <laughs> That's right. Our friend Virginia has come come out of sheltering in place and can now go to restaurants and uh, see friends Have you ever again. thought about how awesome Virginia's state flag is? The uh, we have, woman carrying the... We have the most rad state flag. You all. think so? I do, because it has partial nudity and murder on it. <laughs> have you noticed that about it? It's a true car- crime it episode. Is so in a flag. Rad- it is so <laughs> radical, but I love it. Yeah, I, the we were playing trivia with uh, one of Sarah's friends does a, a Zoom trivia every Friday where, like, hundreds of people from all across the country actually have started showing up. And one of the topics was flags. Um, and the Oregon state flag or something like that, Oregon or Washington, actually has two sides. It's the only flag, state flag with two sides. Really? Yeah, so it's different design on, on either end. It's very cool. There's a beaver on the front. So they have a secret flag? Yeah, it's like a secret flag. Like the <laughs> okay. back of the flag is like, if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. All right, Grace, let's dive into the top. Let's give the people what they want. What do the people want? Well, I, well per last episode, uh, we had decided that you were going to talk to me a little bit about bees. That Yes. And I was going to talk a little bit about uh, why we can't just print a bunch of money. <laughs> I think I've requested that knowledge. Why? Because when I go to Chuck E. Cheese... Uh, they just give me money out of a machine, and I don't know why I can't. The government can't do that for me. Yeah, that's right. And so, uh, yeah, I think we should. And full dive disclosure, right in. we, we have, know we know we have, everything we've we said. have taught each other about these things already because we already done recorded this episode before. Um, but we're gonna do it again anyway. Um, full disclosure. Also, I already forgot everything Drew taught me two days ago. <laughs> So I will be legitimately learning about um, the, the Federal Reserve again. So and I do think exciting. I still know a lot about bees because I told Sarah we all about it when find, I got back. We will find Friday. out about that. <laughs> you could quiz me instead of us actually doing the whole. But then uh, the people at home won't learn anything. Well, they would learn stuff because you would ask a question and okay, I would. Okay, well, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how much I retain. We'll see how much you retain. Okay, so uh, we start with your topic. So let's start again with your topic. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to dive in and talk a little bit about why we can't print a bunch of money. And, okay. And uh, Grayson, I know you already know, know most of this, but we'll start as we okay. normally do. What do you know about why we can't print a bunch of money? It's the same reason why you can't just keep putting air into a balloon. Inflation. <laughs> See, I had two days ago with that joke. That and I got good, a million man. more of them. They're all great. Wow. Um, yes, but you're right. Inflation's the big one. Inflation's because the big one. So tell me what inflation is. It's just supply and demand. 
<laughs> okay. Hit me with it. When you got a lot of money out there, mm-hmm. each dollar is worth a little less. Yep, that's right. Now I know there was a time in history, and we didn't go into this last time, so maybe we can today. Okay. Because I don't understand the gold standard. Um, but there was a time in history when our money was actually represented by gold a bars. bunch of, I'm assuming, yeah. large gold bars, that's like right. in a cartoon, and or they were in they were in big burlap sacks with dollar <laughs> signs drawn on them, and they were sitting down in Fort Knox. And we also had gold coins. We had gold and silver coins. Yes. Yeah. And there was also a silver standard at some point, too, but they said that's bad and the gold standard is good, and now we don't have either. Yeah. Well, and Fort Knox is empty. That's right. Is it? Uh, I don't know if Fort Knox is empty. What do they we, have in there? I don't know if we've kept all the gold and we've converted it back into cash. Is that where they go at the end of or... Indiana Jones with the, with <laughs> that, the top men have, like, the No, that's not the Indiana Jones. That's, tr- that's National Treasure. You're thinking of <laughs> the knockoff Indiana yeah, Jones. I, yeah, I got it confused. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the lovely um, movies. So national supply treasure. and demand. That's right. Hey, supply I and like, demand. I like that national treasure. Yeah. Play. And so let's when go into. When he has into... the magical glasses that Ben Franklin invented. <laughs> <laughs> Let him see the secret messages. On the, on the, on the Declaration of Independence. Uh, what a lovely film. We should do a whole episode on the national treasure. On, I, would, I would love an episode on, um, oh my gosh, what's the actor's name? Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. We could do, yeah, we could do a whole episode I about know how his Mandy entire is life. like the best movie ever made. <laughs> There's a scene in Mandy where Nicolas Cage lights a cigarette off of a burning skull. Wow. Uh, that movie is is so metal. It's great. <laughs> um, but please tell me about the Federal Reserve. Yeah, okay, so back in the day, uh, the way that we decided value between currencies was based on what you're talking about, the gold standard. Because... Uh, converting a, the dollar back into gold and converting the pound back into gold made it really easy for the pound and the dollar to I understand. I know how much gold this dollar is worth. Correct. I know how much gold this pound is worth, so it's easy to convert. Correct. And I don't remember the term for this, but it's like a certain type of the way you track currency. And back, I think during Richard Nixon, um, they converted away from the gold standard. Um, and Why? became Well... Basically because uh, it was limiting growth, essentially. because You're limited by the amount of gold that you have hoarded. Correct. Away. And okay. so we were like, uh, if we move to a fiat currency in which we like just... Like the car. <laughs> so we asked, like the car, the fiat currency. So how many dollars is this fiat worth? <laughs> yeah, we go we by, have, go we by, by fiat fiats standard. we can buy. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but a fiat currency is uh, just a currency you... Um, intrinsically know the value of. It doesn't need to be converted into anything else for you to understand how much we it's worth. We have all just gone Believed. together and said, hey. We look, all believe in look, this. <laughs> I know this is paper. Hey, come here. I know this is paper. We all know it's paper. Just hear me out. We're going to say it's money. Is that cool? That's, is it cool if we say the paper's money? And that's and it, right? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's what that's, it is. Everybody was like, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I think the reason you asked this question initially was because of the stimulus checks. Yeah, I wanted to know why the government was allowed to print money and send it to me. Yes, and I think the big misconception with the stimulus checks is that, um, or not misconception, but the big question is where did we get the money? Where did the money come from? Yeah, because because they claim to not have any money, and, and we have no we money. Owe to all this money to China for something. Yeah, we bought something from China and forgot to pay it back. <laughs> We bought cars, fiat cars. We bought a bunch of fiats, <laughs> and it was weird that we bought them from China and not Italy. But <laughs> yeah, and so uh, I kind of want to delve into that question a little bit. If you're okay with that tangent, I'm okay with it. Okay, and uh, it'll definitely be the first time that I've heard <laughs> any of this information. So I'm very excited to hear it. Uh, okay, so the way that we uh, got money for these stimulus checks is the way that the government gets money for anything we want to pay for. Um, and it's basically three ways. So it can be a revenue generation for the money, which is basically taxes. Okay. Um, or could the government have a large, large bake sale? Yes, we could have a large, large bake sale. Okay. That's what that's what Mitch McConnell was doing. There was though. an episode of Hey Arnold when they they made a giant like pizza puff pastry. No. To win the Guinness Book of World Records. And they sold it? No, they didn't sell it. Oh, I thought it was going to be a massive bake sale. No, I think they just kind of did it. But I'm saying that we could do that and we could sell it. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly what happened. We made a giant thing of puff pastry. Okay. Uh, But yeah, that's a revenue thing. So we could raise taxes. uh, The government could sell assets. um, And we could... So that's one way. The other way is we could uh, cut spending. So we could find the money in the budget that's already established by cutting other things that the government pays for. Military spending. I hear about a lot of government waste. Yes, there is a lot of waste in the government. And so you could 
cut some of that fat and find that money somewhere else. But the thing, the, the price tag we're talking about with the stimulus checks is very large. That's $3 trillion. $3 trillion. Three trillion dollars. Can I tell you something? I don't think I can fathom anything above about 1000 of anything. Like, I, of, of like anything. I think if you were, imagine 1000 apples. I'm like... Man, maybe I don't know. <laughs> like, then if you get to I, three trillion, it's like a hundred barrels of apples. Like that's kind of easy to comprehend. Is like you okay. have a big football field full of apples. Would that and be barrels. a trillion apples? Do you think? No, that would be a thousand apples. If you, a every, football a, field of <laughs> apples is going to be more than a thousand. I know that. I don't know if much. You have, if you have a hundred barrels of a hundred apples, it's probably like I'm, a I, we are now the people in the math problem. <laughs> Horatio has 76,000 apples. We're taking the SAT right now. <laughs> uh, okay. Welcome to the SAT prep podcast, Learning in Public. Learning in Public, where we train for the SAT out in public. <laughs> oh, God. All right, back to it. There's one last way that we could raise $3 trillion. Okay. Um, or two more ways. One is the one we've already talked about, yeah. inflation. We could print a bunch of more money. Yeah. But obviously that would inflate the currency, making each dollar less valuable. Right, so that's just bad. So it's just There's, bad. Yeah. It makes the – the you don't actually gain $1,200 in value for each person. Right. You gave $1,200. That value has that still are has now, to come from somewhere. You can't just create value. Correct. Okay. And so the final way is to take on the big buzzword of the U.S. government don't say spending. It. Don't say it. Debt. He said it. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Drew wants us to go more into debt. That's right. I do. Okay. Um, and that's how we paid for the stimulus checks. We borrowed money from uh, a bunch of people. Uh, and so I kind of now want to delve into a tangent on the U.S. debt. Because you had mentioned before this idea that we had How bought... can a country be in debt to another country? It's so Right, that we had me. bought a bunch of stuff from China, lo- China loaned us money, and then yeah. it's bad. Juju I Magumbo. hear a lot about we uh, uh, us owing China money, and yeah. I don't know what that and means. And I kind of want to dispel this, because 60% of the U.S. debt is actually owned by U.S. entities. So if you had 10 apples, that would be like <laughs> six of those apples were owned by like your brother. That's right. That's right. Six of our apples are owned by our brother. It's within the family. Uh, that's And so that's uh, U.S. Uh, citizens. So that's like your grandmother goes out and buys some bonds um, from a, like the U.S. And the U.S. says, like, we'll give you a 5% return on this bond after 30 years of you holding it. My grandma bought five apples. And the <laughs> government says that in whatever, 20 years, we'll give you seven apples, right? That's right. Yes, yeah. this is how this is working. Exactly. I guess I guess she didn't buy them. She gave them apples, and they're going to give her back apples. That's right. And that's, so that's about actually 29% of U.S. debt. Oh, it's all in bonds. It's all is, in bonds. That, is that mainly to private citizens, or is that also to companies uh, and other things? Or who is that Yeah, to? that's private citizens and private entities. Okay. Um, the other 30% of that 60% is actually U.S. Uh, departments themselves. It's mm-hmm. so like the Federal Reserve actually owns debt. From the United States. Okay. And like the Smithsonian owns debt from the United States. Something like probably like uh, forestry, right? Yeah. Like they probably make a lot of money, right? State parks, all that stuff. And the reason they do that is because uh, it's a solid investment for all of their like cash that they have on hand. It's the government. You know, they're, they're going to pay it back. They're going to pay it back. And uh, so you throw your cash um, in loans to the, the government. The government's going to pay you back in a certain amount of time because it's the safest investment basically in the entire world right now. Um, and so that other 40% is uh, non-U.S. entities. And so that's other governments that have said, like, we believe in the United States. We know you're going to pay us back. So... Um, we're going to loan you some money. And 8% of that 40% is actually owned by China. Okay. So, whereas I think a lot of people That's 8% feel... 8% of the entire U.S. debt 80, is to China. 8% of the entire U.S. debt, which is still a lot, Yeah. but it's not... 8 out of 100 apples. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's that... That's enough to make a pie. That's enough to make a pie, but it's not enough to take over the government, which is what I think a lot of people, no, people who are... <laughs> I'm going to tell you what everybody, including myself, imagines is that one day, what did you say the uh, the prime minister, president of China, what is Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping could call up President Trump on the phone and say, it's time, it's to, time, pay time to pay the piper. <laughs> and he could come over and say, we own America now. Like he's going to, he's a repo man. He's going to, he's going to come over here and just repossess America. Right. And, th- and that's, the and that big, is not a feasible thing. And that's not a feasible thing. And it's also not how the debt for the United States works. Because whereas when you go out and get a mortgage for a loan from a bank, the bank 
uh, sets the terms for your loan, right? You as the lender yes. don't have the leverage. Right. With the U.S. government, the U.S. actually sets its own terms for its loans. So when they issue bonds that people can buy, they set the terms of the interest rate, the liquidity date, all that stuff. So uh, the liquidity date means like when you can actually take out that money again as real cash money and not just a piece of paper that says IOU. Mm -hmm. um, and that makes it uh, really great for the U.S. because all, almost all of our loans, um, actually, I think all of our again don't quote us on anything we say we are not experts you said again we said that two days ago we have not said that in this episode <laughs> we are not experts in anything we are just two doofuses in a park talking right. about stuff um but yeah almost all of our our loans our bonds are issued at an interest rate of like less than one percent mm. um that's good which is really great and it's because uh the u.s government is just a very good investment so we have all of the leverage for um what what we issue as loans so china can't ever say like it's time to pay the piper because the u.s says china we're gonna pay you now the u.s not set, the other set way the around terms. okay yeah so that that's basically how we paid for stimulus checks is we said hey the u.s needs money to uh give our citizens some cash we're gonna issue three trillion dollars in bonds who's up for it um and private citizens uh uh like I, I want to say donated, but they didn't donate. They bought. Right. Um, and then because they're getting money back from that. Exactly. Later, yeah. And then external entities uh, also like bought into the system. Um, and that's why you have twelve hundred more dollars in your pocket than you did. Before. I do not still have not gotten mine. No, oh, the grace. And that's you so hate to sad. See, I looked it up and the IRS said, we don't know who you are, or what you're talking about. Really? I'm yeah. sure it'll get here at some point. That's sad. Tell me about it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and so that's that's the answer, I think, to your question of why we can't print a bunch more money. Yes, because deflates it, the current. Yeah, your money is worthless if you do that. Exactly. And then, how did we get three trillion dollars as we went into debt? Aren't well, that was beautiful. Thank you for explaining that to me. I want to take an ad break now. Do you want to do a break now or after topics? What time are we? I can go either way. How long? Yeah, we could take an ad break. I, th I think do the ad break now. Okay, we're gonna be back in a little bit right after this message from our sponsor. <laughs> All right, Drew, who is our sponsor this week? Uh, this week, as with probably all of our episodes for Eternity, was <laughs> sponsored by... You say for Eternity until people start wanting to give us money. That's right, and until this is the change. hot podcast that everybody wants yes. to sponsor. But uh, this uh, podcast was sponsored by Lumastic. Uh, Lumastic is uh, a platform for creators and entrepreneurs to collect, uh, connect and collaborate together on projects. Um if that sounds interesting to you, or so what you, kind of projects would would that be? Well, Grayson, like, you're on the platform as an okay, aspiring author writing that's true. a new so novel. Something, something like a like a novel would be a good thing. Right? Yeah. What else? Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you're working on uh, a new company or venture you're trying to start. What if I was in in like college and I wanted to collaborate on other people working on like a research project? Oh, together? you can definitely do that. That'd be helpful. Uh, and if you're a university administrator and we you want to, <laughs> you <laughs> you want a United States podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. If you're a college College administrator and you want to use Lumastic uh, internally for your own department, uh, hit me up at Drew at But even, <laughs> even if not, a st students would be able to yeah, use it's, this it's for free. free for it's students. completely free. It's yeah. free for students. It's free for uh, all of you creative people out there. If you want to read some chapters of Grayson's upcoming novel... Um, I tell you every time we record not to plug this. <laughs> And every week I am gonna because it's very good, wow. and you have it's unedited, so we'll see. You're very talented, but I, I and... have really enjoyed the the platform. It's been pretty easy to use. Yeah, so. we're we're working and on a relaunch a... of some new features. Yeah, new features coming out. Yeah. Um, uh, that's gonna come out hopefully before July. Um, so look out for that one. All Wonderful. right. Well, let's get back into uh, Grayson's topic. So Drew, I'm actually really very happy about the internet's mercy killing on this podcast because. <laughs> I forgot to make a really, really good joke the other day oh. because you asked me to t tell you about bees. So if you recall on our last episode, if you were watching the video version especially, mm -hmm. a, a carpenter bee about the size of, what would you say, a Chipotle burrito uh, <laughs> landed on Drew's arm uh, to her last one. And so we thought I should talk about bees this week probably. And so through this podcast, I will have taught Drew about both the birds and the bees. <laughs> See, aren't you happy that oh, we had to re-record wow. for that one? That's great, right? That was right? all worth it. It was so worth it just for that. So, oh. Drew, can you tell me what a bee is? I, I can now. Okay, I can what's now. a bee? A bee... I see an insect. How do I know if it's a bee? Uh, a bee is um, a, a 
Oh fuck! I think I, I've forgotten this now. It's a pollinator. It is a pollinator. I already, I already, uh, I already. So I said insect. So yeah, what's the first thing. What's the first thing I was looking at? If I want to know if it's a bee. If it's an insect. Okay. How do I know if it's an insect? Well, it has to have six legs or more. Okay. No six. Is so eight? It's arachnids are not insects. Arachnids are not insects. That's very interesting to me. Okay. Um, we can talk about arachnids another episode. Okay. Yeah, insect, six in, legs. Sect. S e c t. Sect. Oh six. wow. Wow, I learned a lot from this podcast. <laughs> so now you know what an insect is. Okay, boom. Yeah. So it's an insect. It has mm-hmm. six legs, um, and it's a pollinator, yep. uh, and it has a stinger. Yeah, some will have stingers. Only some have stingers. Only some have stingers. You know. You know about this. I don't. Some, I don't some know. Bees, <laughs> no. This is great. So we get round two of I get to teach uh, you about bees. So, um, yeah, a lot of them are pollinators. So when I say that, what do I mean? Um, They... Oh no, they go and get nectar too. Right, they they they, they go. So and that's that's the big thing, right? Telling a bee from a wasp, for instance, because they're right. very closely related. But wasps bees, are carnivorous. Right, that's the big thing. <gasps> oh, you're crushing it. You're doing great. Wasp, <laughs> wasps, yeah, wasps typically will feed on other animals. Boom. And they'll they'll feed animals to their young, whereas uh, bees feed on pollen and nectar. And so when we say they're a pollinator, it means they're going to flowers, um, and they're attracted. What what about the flower might attract them? The nectar. Nectar the probably because it smells good. It tastes good. It's the also color. the color also, right? Yep. And we didn't really talk about this last time, but um, like bees can see a lot more colors than we can. Because they have eight eyes or whatever. Well, it doesn't have as much to do with the number of eyes they have, but they can see <laughs> they can see wavelengths of light that we can't see. I was really trying. So I was like, I remember they, they have do, more they eyes. They do have a lot of eyes. <laughs> um, but th- they can actually see colors that we can't see. So sometimes flowers that might not be super colorful to us might be really colorful to a bee. Oh, really interesting. Interesting. They might reflect wavelengths that we can't see. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. And it's like, like the mantis fish or the mantis shrimp. Yes. The it mantis is like shrimp that. can see like fucking it's, it's, UV it's, it's light. More and colors it's... than any other animal, And it doesn't right? use it at all. I watched well, this whole bee, video. Bees do actually use it. Well, good for bees. Yeah, bees are, <laughs> bees are doing great. Um, yeah, what, was, what, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you were telling Oh, you... yeah, yeah. So, so we talked about how some plants are like flowering plants and some plants aren't, right? Right. And so plants... So plants like conifers, so like pine trees, things like that, they don't really have flowers, and they typically are not insect pollinated. They're right. typically wind pollinated, right? Right. Um, and not only that, but a lot of flowering plants will have like if a if a flower is like small or it's green or it doesn't really smell like anything, it's mm-hmm. probably not an insect pollinated flower. Mm-hmm. Insect pollinated flowers are typically larger and would be attractive to insects, right? Right, right. And so, what other things other than bees might be pollinators? Uh, wind. So wind, yeah. But Boom. what are other animals? Uh, hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, yeah. So there, there are a few bird week. species that will, yeah. Uh, and there was one major one that I didn't get last week, and I'm still not going to get this week. Bats. Bats. It was bats, birds, all these things. Yeah, bats. Um, actually, some of the first pollinators that's thought um are were actually beetles. That's it's right. Po- pollination probably arose. Um, just as a sort of additional genetic diversity increaser, you know, when yeah. uh, some beetle one day decided, hmm, this looks tasty. And then got Why yellow not? and black. I'm going to try it out. Bee yeah. Became um, the first bee. So um, what's really cool about bees, though, oh, and butterflies, of course. Yes, that's right. But bees are really the most specialized pollinators there are, more specialized than others. And that's mostly because of the um, the hairs that they have specifically for pollination. Right. So those are called scopal hairs. That's right. Scopa. I remember that. And I didn't remember that at all. <laughs> typically, m- male or female bees will have scopa. Which one? Uh, the male, female, female bees. Yeah. And it's because the female bees do all the fucking work. Yeah. You're cursing in front of a lot of children that are running around. Oh, right sorry. Now. I'm woke, though. Because <laughs> you had one beer. Male bees don't do jack shit. That's what I learned bees, on Friday. Male bees don't, don't do a lot of work, typically. Um, yeah, so females will usually be the ones to actually have scopal hairs. Uh, most bees will have scopal hairs on their legs. So if you see a bee with like really hairy legs, legs, yeah, it's because it's not because they haven't shaved in a while. It's because <laughs> that's how she picks up pollen, um, which is usually accidental. Although bees will also, you know, they feed on pollen sometimes too. Right. Um, but it's usually incidental. They pick up the pollen and they move it to another flower. And increases genetic good. diversity and life's good. Yes. And yeah. the big, the big cool takeaway I had on Friday was this idea that. Uh, bees. Oh, about the sex, sex of bees. Well, the, the, that, but also this idea of like that they uh, contribute back to their the flowers and right. all that stuff 
it's mutualism. Mutualism. It's, that's it's right. It's beneficial for both, right? Yes, I they love that concept. They are both benefiting off of the system, and they co-evolved because of that. Yeah, they just like became. They because started the, the to flowers, collaborate. But the essentially. flowers will be able to adapt way better if they're getting different pollen spread from different flowers more often. Right. And, and the, the bees, bees get, are getting the, food. Yeah, they get food. It's just like a good yeah, system. And, and like a lot of, so uh, we can talk about. Um, what foods that we eat that might require pollination, but like apples, for instance, that requires pollination, but you actually have to have two very different types of apples in order to get an apple. Does that make sense? So if you get pollen from a Golden Delicious and it goes to the pistil of a Golden Delicious, you probably won't get an apple. What will you get? It, it's You won't get anything. So that's oh, actually how the plant kind of controls against inbreeding to increase its genetic diversity is usually it kind of cancels itself out if the pollen is too similar to the, the genes of the, the flower that it goes to. That's so cool. to, to have a successful apple crop, you need to have a couple of different types of apples. Wow. Um, so like we say, people try to kind of overblow the importance of bees, and I think they're very important. Oh, I remember but, like, this. The largest, I'll never trust mental the floss The largest again. <laughs> food crops in the world are by far like not pollinated by bees at all. They're mostly wind-pollinated. So mm-hmm. um, I wrote them down here. Like wheat, corn, rice, soybeans, sorghum. Sorghum. This is the one I learned about you on don't, Friday. You don't need... Uh, you don't need bees for any of this. Yeah, those. and we had talked about how that existence would be much like... And potatoes, you don't need them, right? Potatoes, to create new seeds, requires, I think, insect pollination. But to propagate. But to propagate, you don't, right? Because you can just clone them from the right. eyes of potatoes. And so a world without the pollina- pollinators would just be like the Martian, where we're all just like... You're eating your dookie potatoes Yeah, we're eating yeah. our dookie potatoes and rice, and it's just right, boring. So, and, Everything's and, and bland. Not, but not only boring, but you would also be missing out on a lot of nutrients that you need. A lot of vitamins yeah. and nutrients that you actually really require. Yeah. Um, so things that you do need pollination for, okra. Okra, the peppers, berries. Yeah, any kind of berries. Uh, any kind of berry. Uh, cucumbers, strawberries, citrus. Citrus. That's squash, what, that's a big so one. that includes you know pumpkins, all gourds, yeah. all those. It's like anything colorful. Um, here you go, millennials. Coffee and avocados. What? Nineties kids will love be. this one. <laughs> they'll they'll actually hate this one because you can't have coffee and avocados without it. Um, but you'll be able to afford so many more houses without it. Uh, <laughs> cherries, grapes, and like I said, tomatoes. You wouldn't have any of those without your pollinators. Unless Boom. you, Drew Lytle, want to walk around with a Q-tip like Gregor Mendel <laughs> and take the pollen and move it between flowers because you could do that if you really wanted to. Wow. Um, but that would take a, a long time probably. Wow. Um, something else that you might remember, um, people really people really love honeybees. And when they talk about saving the bees, they always talk always about honeybees. Always talk about the honeybees. Drew, where are honeybees native to? Uh, Europe. Europe, Eurasia, yeah, they're yep. they're they're native to Europe and Asia, and they came everywhere because of colo- because colonization. Of colonia, yeah, yeah. Which hey, like I love Good my for them. I love my honey. Yeah, but uh, they aren't that important. And, and this is kind of interesting. Also, honeybees are actually not very good pollinators. Why? Um, their behavior they tend to go from flower to flower on one plant and then go back to the hive. So they're very inefficient. It's not about being inefficient, but a lot of your native bees will tend to go. I'm going to go to a flower on this plant. I'm going to and go, to go all the all way all over here. I'm going to go to flower mm. all the way here. And so they're actually, they're going to get more diversity mm. with your native bees typically than you will uh, honeybees. And not only that, but if you have, because native bees are really the ones that are hurting more so than honeybees. Again, they're not, they're not native. We, you don't need them here. But <laughs> if you, when native bees are present, there's more competition for flowers. So honeybees tend to be perform better as pollinators when you have native oh. bees around as well. Interesting. I think it's really interesting. So the honeybee is the one that's threatened. No, they're 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 all threatened. They're all oh, they bad. all are threatened. They all are, but you shouldn't be as worried about the honeybee because they don't belong here anyway. Oh, Does that make okay. sense? But people are worried about the honey. We do love our honey, and we obviously do. we have a lot of businesses that are that require honey, and I, I love the stuff. Yeah. But it's just e- ecologically speaking, it's you, not you're, very important. You're trying to go for the underdog bee. You want? It's the, not even just underdog. You know, it's just those are the ones. Bee. Those are the ones that belong here, and not only that, but. Like I said, what bees, do you mean belong bees, here, Grayson? Bees and flowers <laughs> co-evolve. I'm, right? My family's not native to this country. Mine's I, not I, either. I, I mind, do I not belong here? I mean, ecologically speaking, we are certainly doing more harm to this country. <laughs> I think you would probably agree. Uh, okay, ecologically speaking. Ecologically speaking, yeah. But um, you know, we provide a lot to society, so. I don't. Maybe you do. Stay woke. Stay Maybe woke. you do. <laughs> um, what you dropped me? I have no idea what I was talking about now. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, bees and plants will co-evolve, right? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And so the native bees evolved alongside the native plants. And so they'll have, you know, emergence. They know how to do it. Well, not only do they know how to do it, but like emergence times for a lot of like your springtime bees, they'll emerge at the same time as the flowers that have to be currently blooming at the same time. So mm. these... They've matched up. They're baked basically. in. Like these things are baked into the mm. timelines, the language of the birds. So you know? us focusing on keeping around the honeybee it's is It's just not that helpful. Gotcha. Expand your scope a little bit. Yeah. You know? We need to include all or bees. Or expand your scopa. We're about you will. including all bees. Expand <laughs> our scopa. Yeah. Um, okay, so sociality in bees also. This is why this is this where is I think it's wild. really this interesting. This was the wild. So thing. do all bees live in hives, Drew? No. No. Some are solo bees. So they honey bees live in They're hives. They're introverted. Um, a lot of uh, most bumblebees live in hives. There's some mm -hmm. solid, but a lot of bees are solitary. Yeah. Um, so they'll typically just be one female who's laying her own eggs. Um, um, usually she'll create a little pollen nectar store to lay alongside those eggs. So and mason then, bees are the ones I really use the example because I really mason bees are really cool mm. and they're really effective pollinators of especially like fruits. Hmm. Um, there's one that's just called like a blueberry bee. And they love wow. blueberries, and they pollinate all the wild blueberries around here. It's great. Um, it's specialization. Spe bees. Exactly, it's specialization. And wow. specialized flowers require specialist bees. So and vice bees versa. have basically evolved to the point where they know they know their plants. It's not even that they know their plants. It's just I mean they emerge at the right time for those plants. Do you, do you know what I mean? Well, that, I feel like that means they know. They they've chosen to emerge in the, at the... In, in the language of the birds and the trees. Maybe they. <laughs> Maybe they know. Um, but right, not all bees live in hives. But like I was saying, so solitary bees, each each female will be fertile. She'll be able to lay eggs. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a colony, only one female is fertile. What yeah. do we call her? The queen. The queen, right? She's the only one who can lay any eggs. Yes, queen. Um, and then all of, the, all of the other bees that are in that hive with her, all of the other female bees are infertile. They can't lay any eggs. Yep. And um, this is the freaking okay, okay. wild so thing. So how is sex determined in bees? Well... Uh, it's whether or not the egg was pollinated or not, or fertilized, fertilized. but not for, or not fertilized. Right, fertilized or not fertilized. Whereas yeah. they get to choose. Whereas this in, was in fantastic. humans, in humans, it's you know, it's random. XX is typically female. Yeah. XY is typically male. In bees, it's um, an egg that's fertilized will develop into a female bee. An egg that is not fertilized will develop into a male bee. Yeah, and they do, and the the so female it, gets to choose. They have she like can a little choose. sack, yeah, right? Yeah. So she she. Yeah, so she mates with the male, and then she stores that sperm, and then she can decide when she's laying the egg if she wants it to be male or female based on if she fertilizes it or not. Which is wild. It is the wildest thing ever. So um, here's the biggest question, and it's related to this. So it looks like there would be altruism in a bee colony, right? Mm -hmm. You have bees that don't reproduce, right. that for no reason at all are helping out this queen reproduce, right? right. They're feeding they her children. Not to. They're feeding her yeah. children. Yep, yep. And, and, and um, what's, uh, evolutionarily speaking, that doesn't make any sense because an individual should care only about passing on their own genes, right? right. So... To pr put their genes in the gene pool that, and that is this species. As, as an organism, that is your entire goal, is right. to pass on your genes. So how does it work then that a bee would actually... And in the case of like a honeybee stinging you, attacking the hive, is actually sacrificing its own life for the hive. How would that possibly make any sense, evolutionarily speaking? Well, I already know the answer. You already and know the answer. Freaking profound. And the answer is that because bees are haplodiploid, that's what we call it when you have fertilized me turns into female, unfertilized turns into male. Because <laughs> they are haplodiploid like that, bees are actually more related to their own sisters, the offspring of the queen, than they would be to their own offspring. Which is actually Which means crazy. that by letting, getting their sisters um, and f f furthering the queen's genes, they're actually doing a better job of passing on their own genes than they would if they were mating um, with, with a male somewhere. Which is... It's the wildest thing ever. Wild. And what you had said it's incredible. back in Friday, which I thought was fantastic, was that... The hive actually then becomes it's the organism. organism. It's a super organism. Yeah, and the, what do you call the? They are super sisters. They're super sisters. Yes, yes. I love that. Yeah, it that. actually it functions as super. Uh, you think of it as a super organism where the entire hive reproduces versus individuals reproducing. Right, and so it's not that I am working for only myself as a bee. I'm working You're, in this bigger organ organism because it is better for you to work for the entire organism. Yeah. Which is, I feel like, something we can really learn from Maybe. in a way. Yeah. I don't mean that we should start like being haploid, diploid, and all that stuff. Well, but it's I, like, I don't think that's probably physically possible for Right, uh, but humans. I think it's interesting to think of ourselves as not being uh, individualistic, but as a part of our own, yeah, a collective, our yeah. own species. And, and yeah. 
Our, uh, I think we can learn something from the bees. The we bees. can learn something from all the little critters. Now, now, Drew, these bees, they're cool and pollination's great, but I heckin' just hate getting stung by these little bastards. Mm. Um, so what's the deal with bee stings? What's, what, what, is a, what is a stinger? What is a stinger? Do you remember this one? Do you remember what a stinger is? I thought the stinger was just the, the thing that got shot into you. It's like it a little... It is. So what's really interesting... Like the porcupine So, so like prickles. I said, bees... Um, wasps are the ancestors of bees, right? Oh, I didn't know. I or didn't they, they at least had a common ancestor that was very wasp-like. Hmm. Um, and those wasps had ovipositors. So the females... Oh, that's right. The, the females have an ovipositor. It's what she uses to lay eggs. A lot of them will actually inject other organisms with an egg... Um, we call it parasitoid, so it's not really a parasite because it's... It actually, doesn't actually feed off of and grow in there. It well, just, like, it, well, it does, but up. instead it's it's like the adult would lay an egg in something. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, so it's interesting, actually. The, the like stinger, in the, movie the stinger, It's just like Alien. And the stinger <laughs> is a modified ovipositor. Right. So remember when we were Some, talking... Only females, right, sting. Only females would have an ovipositor, yeah, so males. only females can ever sting. So Male bees cannot sting. Back in the first episode, if you watched uh, the video version, you uh, could see that Grayson was saying that... Did you it, post that? I think, right, that it wouldn't sting oh, me yeah, yeah. because it was a male. I No, I didn't know if it was a male or not. Yeah. I was just telling you Well, you had told me better. it was a male to make uh, me feel it's better. It's probably <laughs> a male. It'll, it'll probably be fine. Um, yeah, yeah. So an individual bee would not have a stinger, right? Correct. A solitary bee couldn't because she needs the ovipositor to lay her eggs. Right. Um, it's really only on like a colonial species that you'd have like a bad sting. I mean, they can sting you with an ovipositor, but it's not very painful. It doesn't have a lot of like venom associated with it. So really, only the sting. the colonizing bees are right. the ones so I like need to watch bee. out for. Um, another thing is that the barb. So people talk a lot about the barb stinger, and this is where places like. I think BBC and Mental Floss both got this wrong. That Come on. All, the big difference between bees and wasps is that, is that bees can sting you once and wasps can sting you as many times as they want. That's not true. That's just a complete fabrication. It's just a complete lie. Uh, the, <laughs> what they're referring to fake is... Fake news. It is fake news. What they're referring to is the barbed stinger on a honeybee. Mm-hmm. Um, when a honeybee stings you, um, she has a barbed stinger that gets embedded in your skin. So when she pulls out, the stinger stays and it kind of rips her guts out and kills her. Um, so it does more damage to you in the long run, injects more venom, um, because that thing st- is still like pumping venom into you even after it's dead. Mm-hmm. Um, she gives up her life in the process. Um, but actually, if she was stinging another insect that was trying to like get into the hive, she could sting that just and prick it, it. W- she could just prick it and, and pull out, and um, it wouldn't get it. It only gets embedded in fleshy skin. <laughs> Most other bees and wasps uh, can all sting as many times as they want. Mm-hmm. They don't and have, that, they don't and have that the real stinging. difference, right, is that the wasps are carnivorous. That's the main difference. Yeah. Um, some wasps, I think, are actually function as pollinators. So. It gets a little wibbly wobbly when you really try to <laughs> tell these things apart, but wow. th- that's that's the big difference between them. Um, well, Grayson, thanks for chatting to me about the bees. You have a quiz for us, right? I do actually. Yes. So here's the quiz. This Wait, week. but before so we last... do the quiz, I want to uh, actually announce the winner, the of, winner our of our last, last quiz. So Grayson, to, if you remember, the question was you're supposed to identify what kind of a bird it was based on the call. Yep. Um, it sounded a bit like whip for wee, whip for wee, kind of like that, you would That's say? That's right. And, okay. and, and it was identified as what? It was identified as a whippoorwill. Is that, that is correct? correct? That, that is, is correct. correct. And that was uh, submitted by actually my father, Alan Lytle. Congratulations. Lytle. So congratulations, Thanks for listening. Dad. Um, his three sentences that he wanted to say, because if you uh, answer the quiz correctly, you get to give us three sentences to say on the podcast. Uh, and he cheated a little bit, but I'll read them all. Um, big fan of learning in public. Already subscribed. Keep them coming. Thanks, Dad. Uh, highly recommend the sponsor, Lumastic. Great company, great product. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and also, crazy in love with Andy Lytle. Superb wife, superb mother. Definitely married up. Happy Mother's Day. That's sweet. Um, and he wanted us to, to be reminded that he answered this at 5, 6, at 7, 21 p.m. So that is before Mother's Day, yeah, Mom. he got it in before he Mother's Day. He did get it in before Mother's Day. So congratulations, Dad. All right, so what's, what's this week's quiz, Grayson? What do the listeners have to look forward to? Okay, so this week, I'm going to give you, and it's heartbreaking because I used up all the best ones on the, on the bad recording that was killed. No, no, no. So I'm saying we don't do, don't do any for me. No, I'm going to do some for you anyway. <laughs> So you have to guess, Drew, if this is a real species of bee or if it's one that I done made up. Okay. Okay? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First one. Handsome bumblebee. (laughs) This is a new one. No, they're all new. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You did this right now? Oh, I did it during church this morning. (laughs) I was supposed to be listening to a sermon. Uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm going to say that a handsome bumblebee is not real. It is not real. I made that one up. Good job. Nailed it. Nailed it. All right, you ready? <laughs> Hit me with it. Perplexing bumblebee. <laughs> Uh, real because I want it to be. It is real. Wow! Anyway, I, I quizzed you the other day on Confusing Bumblebee. That's the same thing. Those are the same bumblebee. The the species name for that is Bombus Perplexus, which I just <laughs> love so much. All right, here we go. Bellflower Resin Bee. I feel like that sounds real. It is real. All right. You're crushing it. You're doing a great job. I'm three for three. You're three for three right now. Horn-faced bee. <laughs> that is a false bumblebee. No, that one's real. Oh, damn it. I've ruined my streak. Um, Hornface bee is not a bumblebee. That's a, um, it's a mason bee. Oh, okay. Wow. It's, yeah, they, we actually have them here. It's a Japanese species and they're invasive. Mm. And I believe that one, we don't even know how it got here. Mm. Um, some of the mason bees were introduced on purpose for the purposes of pollination, but um, there were a few species that just kind of showed up. Interesting. Hit me with the next Lemon one. crunch honeybee. <laughs> that sounds like a cereal. Uh, so I'm going to say that's false. That one's false. Ah, I that. nailed it. Um, Wait, save the last, I went three. You no, no, to no, get... no, 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 no. Faithful leaf cutter. That sounds real. That one's real. Wow, you're I doing just, so much better. I'm... You failed miserably at this the other day. <laughs> Undeniable Mason. <laughs> I want that to be real. No, that one's ah, real. damn it! I know, I know. You wish. Um, okay, so the the quiz for you folks at home this week. There is one species of bumblebee, and it's the only one that I know of where the male actually does pollinate. Mm. Um. So. Actually, yes, I, I gave up, I gave too much away in the last recording. So I'll just say there is one species of bumblebee that I know of where the male actually pollinates. Um, so you have to tell me what the species name is and how it how it is attracted to the flower that it pollinates. If that makes wow, sense. that seems like a complicated question. Well, because it's but not good luck. It is not attracted the... by scent and smell. Um, like, oh, this smells oh, delicious. I want to eat it. Like that's a good hint. Others. Yeah. All so right. If you so can if tell you... us that, then you can give us three sentences of whatever nonsense you want us to say, or and we will do it. We'll you can read whatever find, if you get it right. You can find the form to submit your answer in the uh, description of the podcast. That's right. All right, Grayson. So, fortunate bumblebee. <laughs> Is there a less fortunate bum- bumblebee? There's, an, there's an, a series of unfortunate bumblebees. <laughs> a series of unfortunate bumblebees. I'm gonna say that's a real bumblebee. No, it's made up. Ah. I didn't even have the one written down. I just made it up just now. Wow. He's a creative human, everybody. Well, because, I mean, there's... Publish his book. Publish it. Indiscriminate (laughs) Bumblebee is real. Lemon Cuckoo Bumblebee is real. (laughs) Confusing Bumblebee is real. Why do you sound so angry? It's wild that these are real names. It's crazy. Okay. I'm done talking about bees. Wow. So now do we want to get a guest on the show? Yeah. uh, I think we have some time for uh, a a surprise guest. We have all the time in the world. All right, let's bring somebody on. Yeah, come on over. Oh here, my buddy, gosh, guys. A, a, a human has appeared. So I think wild Keith cube. is going to have to talk into my hat. For yeah, this yes, to work. that's right. Okay. I'm cool. going to move the camera a little bit. So Keith, uh, what do you have to share with us today on uh, learning in public? What have you been learning? Uh, I've been learning all about some technical stuff. Do you need? Does he need to talk into uh, my hat more? Yeah, he needs. Yeah, super super interesting. Um, you should check it out on Lumastic in a couple of. Uh, we can't just do weeks. another ad for Lumastic. <laughs> What are you teaching us about? Jeez. Uh, I, I can't talk about it right now because it's not quite there. But it has. To Why are you with, here? Um, how data is transmitted from uh, one client to another uh, using something called WebRTC. I think he's talking about bitcoins. <laughs> it's, it's. I don't know what bitcoins are, but I'm pretty sure it's this. Okay. Well, actually, I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. This is a new segment of the show. Is it about aphids? Called Ask Grayson. It's not about aphids or okay. anphids. Okay. Um, anphids is a so, fantasy creature that Keith invented today for his new book. What's up? So, are hornets a type of wasp? Yes. That was very simple. <laughs> what a very was, quick was, answer. That was a very quick answer. Yeah. Wow. Hornets, hornets this is the quality well, content. And, and we I, <laughs> actually, so I don't think there's like a super good um, zoological, like this is a hornet, this is a wasp. I think a hornet is usually more of a colloquial term. Gotcha. Um, but the difference is usually when you look at them, like hornets are usually larger bodied and tend to be like, you know, colored yellow and black. And wasps tend to be really thin bodied with that really thin waist that's typical of wasps. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as I know, that's the difference. Okay. What we a, aren't experts. We're not entomologists. What a fantastic. Uh, what a good guest appearance this has been. Can you teach me about anything? Can you teach me about like woodworking or baking or something? 
Didn't she uh, do woodworking? Not, not so much baking. I, I can do a little bit of woodworking. Tell me, a, okay, t- Keith, what's the best kind of wood for woodworking? Uh, it, it all what's depends the on best what. Okay, wood? Keith, I'm trying to build. <laughs> okay, Keith, would it be possible to build a bicycle out of wood? Yeah, sure. Okay. There's actually a, uh, a bamboo bicycle company. This is great. And bamboo is a type so, of wood. Thank you. Uh, so I should use bamboo for a bicycle. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay, that's you great. Should. It's actually pretty uh, structurally sound. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, what's the best kind of wood? Okay, I, just for whittling. I want to get into whittling. What should I use? Uh, anything that you can find. Anything? Yeah, sure. Why okay. Not? That's great. This is actually, great. Um, there's a couple of things that you, I, I can lend you a, a magazine. Okay. Which probably does not help the. <laughs> We're going to lend um, you a magazine, dear listener. I think it's called uh, Keith, g- give. Which is like Excuse me, bolt. Sloge? I think it's called Sloge. S J O with the two oh, dots. This is, some, this this is, is actually this is some Gwyneth Scandinavian stuff. Oh, no, that's, this, this is Gwyneth Paltrow's Gwyneth... website. <laughs> this is Gwyneth Paltrow's woodworking um, website. It's, well, <laughs> she see, she usually uses the jade eggs. These are wooden eggs. Yeah. Well, she has goop for health, and then Sloge for woodworking. <laughs> there are still eggs though, and you, you got to insert them somehow. Yes. So tell me about that Sloge. Was really, really weird. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Uh, so it's uh, basically when you uh, it's, it's a folk art type of thing oh. so you can build uh, benches and all that kind of stuff um, and it is all practical uh, things that you would actually use okay. so it's not just something that is you know very beautiful it is something that you've created like a spoon uh, it's a certain kind of um, it's basically it's a blade that's at, on a hook and then you're able to actually like carve out the, uh, the spoon itself wow yeah that's fascinating it's, it's pretty cool it's the uh, IKEA of it's the all original things. IKEA. It's the OG IKEA, which is also very Scandinavian. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That That's was fascinating. Very cool. See that? I actually enjoy learning about. See. You need to broaden your horizons. <laughs> what do you mean? People I, I are interested. No one time. will ever want. No one anything. will ever want to submit anything if we're. If I bully them every bully, week. <laughs> bullying them about what they're yeah, learning. This is a comedy podcast. This is what people come here for. The last. It's not a roast podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I that's really I mean, fascinating. We can though. talk about roasts. Oh, oh are you a roast roasts. expert? No, uh, <laughs> that's disappointing. Well, Keith, thanks Keith, for coming thanks on for the show. Us. Not a problem. Should I Again, just... if you want to submit what you're learning to the podcast, uh, you can go to anchor.fm uh, slash learn in public. That's anchor.fm slash learn in public. Leave your submissions there, and you could be featured on the show. Yeah. So okay. and people can go on there and just teach us things, right? And we'll, yeah, and we'll read it on the show. Yeah, you can submit an audio or, recording. And can and you also submit the answer to the quiz there, or is that somewhere else? Yeah, you could also submit the answer to the quiz. That would be a, a lovely way to get your submission in if you don't want to use the uh, form below. And then you can say your own three sentences if you are the winner. And you can also just contact us about anything. Ask us questions, submit topics that you'd like us to talk about, if you think that we should learn about things. Yeah. Yeah. We're happy to hear any of it. Do you have an email address for that, or you just, just go through Anchor for Yeah, that? you can go through Anchor. That's the best way to put in your audio submissions. Uh, but if you want to email us, you can email us at pod or uh, yeah, pod at lumastic.com. Pod P-O-D. at lumastic.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us, Keith. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay. Randomly. Sure. And <laughs> so now you can leave. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do closing remarks. All right, and now it's time for looking forward. Yeah, Grayson, is right? this is the end of the show. So this is the time where it's we look to forward believe. to the next week uh, and talk about maybe our next topic. So I think what we talked about is switching up what we talk about a little bit because I think there's going to be a tendency for me to talk about nature things because yep. that's my wheelhouse. And the tendency is for you to ask me finance questions because you think that's mine. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That one, or technology related, right? Yeah, tech, tech related. Tech, yeah. Um, so next week, I think we decided that I'm going to teach you about AI, specifically how AI relates to video games. That's right. Yeah, we're going to switch, the, switch up the, the history, genre. The history of, um, what does of it stand for? video game AI. Alternative intelligence? What is it? <laughs> Artificial. Artificial. That's right. I knew that. <laughs> I'm going to teach you the, uh, the history of... Art, art, That's not alternative intelligence is how you get fake news. Art, is this like art, alternative facts? I have alternative intelligence. That's what my brain is labeled as. I'm going to teach you, so I'm going to teach you about the history of uh, artificial insemination and how, it re- <laughs> and how it relates to video games. Um, yeah, I think that'll be really cool. And what are you going to talk about? Uh, I actually don't remember from Friday. I think what... you, you talked about doing mutualism. That might be interesting. And you also talked about eyes. 
Yeah, eyes. I think eyes would be so fun. Eyes are really Especially fascinating. Because I'm, I'm a video guy, photo guy. So That's right. seeing the connection between because how talk- eyes work and how cameras work, I think it'd be really fun. That would be real, And I would love to learn about that, actually. Cause cool. I want to know why I, I, I mean, I look at the moon and it looks beautiful and I take a photo of it and it looks like nothing. Yeah. I would love to learn about that. Yeah, so join us next week where we're going to talk about alternative intelligence uh, and how it relates to video games and uh, some stuff about eyes. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And I everybody. believe it's your turn to do a sign-off this week. Uh, our sign-off this week is thanks for listening and stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> I, see, I like that.